Before we start to look at how to apply the principles of genetics that Mendel studied, I want to make sure that everyone has a solid um, foundation and a lot of the vocabulary that we're going to be using. And hopefully most of this is review. Um, we've already talked about genes as being those segments of the DNA that determine the protein. Um, and then when we're talking about genetics, we often talk about alleles, which are the different forms of that trait or gene that they can take on. So oftentimes you might say, oh, the blah, blah, blah gene. And I might say, actually, that's the allele. Okay, so um, as an example, eye color is one that we like to talk about a lot because it's something you can easily see. It's complicated because it's controlled by multiple genes or determined by multiple genes. But you might say, oh, I have the gene for blue eye color. Well, everyone has a gene for eye color, so you have the allele for blue eye color. So that's how that works. Um, two other words that we will be using quite frequently are dominant and recessive. Okay, Dominant is an allele that's going to be expressed all the time, and we represent that with a capital letter. Um, recessive is the allele that can be masked by a dominant allele. So if they show up together, if you have one dominant allele and one recessive allele, the dominant allele is the one that you will actually see. And we'll look at why that happens. Um, so if we think about Mendel and his pea plants, um, here we have a two dominant alleles for yellow color or two recessive alleles for green color. And oftentimes what I like to do when because with a letter like Y, for example, it can be tricky to know, is like, is this capital or is this a lowercase? S's are another really good example, C's. So one trick that I do is when I'm writing a lowercase letter, if it's unclear, I'll put a little horizontal line over it. And then I know, oh, okay, that's my recessive. That's my lowercase letter representing my recessive allele. So if you see me doing that, that's why. Two other words that come up quite frequently in genetics is homozygous and heterozygous. The prefix homo means same, so homozygous is when the two alleles are the same or identical. Hetero, different, so that's when the two alleles are different from one another. So in the example we were just talking about with like a dominant and a recessive allele, um, the dominant allele would be expressed in a heterozygous individual that has one of each, which is what we can see right here. Okay. So you have both the dominant allele and the recessive allele, but the pea plant itself, or the seeds, are yellow because they're dominant. Sometimes heterozygous is also referred to as hybrid. So think like a hybrid car has two different types of fuel sources, essentially, right? A battery and gasoline, two different types, so hybrid, sometimes used for heterozygous, which we'll see when we talk about monohybrid crosses. This is showing an example of homozygous and heterozygous with eye color, which we were talking about before. So individual A. So everyone has two genes for eye color that would be located on the same chromosome. So like chromosome number seven, for example. Um, you get one from your mother, one from your father. So they could be different. Like my mom has blue eyes, so I got a blue allele from my mom. My dad does not have blue eyes. Neither do I. That means I got an allele for non-blue eyes, which we'll call brown for the sake of this right now, right here. So individual A, or myself, would be heterozygous, two different alleles. Someone who has two of the same alleles, two brown alleles, or two blue alleles, would be homozygous. Um, sometimes you might also add on homozygous dominant, to say two dominant alleles, or homozygous recessive, two recessive alleles. Two final words, and I'm sure there'll be others along the way, but two other ones I want to make sure everybody understands at the beginning of this unit are genotype and phenotype. And we looked at these earlier um, when we were talking about um, DNA and proteins. So genotype is really referring to the DNA. What does the DNA say, or the allele pairs? So in this case, big R, little r, or big Y, little y, or big Y, big Y. Phenotype is the physical trait, the appearance, the observable trait, basically what the protein is that's made. So we talked about how when we were looking at mutations, because there are so many different codons, 64 codons, only 20 amino acids, 
that people could have different genotypes but the same phenotype okay? um, because it might make the same protein. And we can see that in this example right here, right, the genotypes of these two individuals, big Y, big Y, big Y, little y, are different, homozygous dominant, heterozygous, but the phenotype, yellow seeds, is still the same. So we'll be using these words a lot over the next month or so.